Hey, what's up guys? Today we are back at Skeletal Animation and this time I will address a question that several viewers have asked me which is how to smoothly transition from one animation to the next. As you can see in the following example, the Raptoid mascot model is currently in the idling animation and we want to transition into the running animation which is very different. In other words, we want to blend these animations together using some form of a blend factor so that when this factor is equal to zero, we are in the starting animation, which is idling. As we slowly increase the factor, you can see that we are shifting out of idling and more and more into running. When the blend factor reaches one, we are fully in the running animation. And now we can decrease the blend factor and as it goes down, the creature is slowing down and we can see more and more features of the idling animation until we are back at the original posture. So I would imagine that in an actual game, you would initiate the transition based on some event or user input, and then depending on how fast you want to go from one animation to the next, will determine the rate of change of the blend factor. It can be very fast, as in this example, or very slow, whatever you need. All right, before we continue, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Piotr D, Vicente A. Spencer, and Brinal Deo, who recently joined the OpenGL Underground. If you too would like to support this channel, you can do that at patreon.com slash OGLDev, or by joining the YouTube channel as a member. Okay, let's do a quick recap of the data structures that SMP provides in order to support skeletal animation. SIMP is of course the library that I'm using to load and animate models. Check out the video description for more videos on how to get animation up and running with SIMP. The main SIMP class is called AI Scene and it contains a graph that defines the relationship between the bones. For example, the finger is part of the hand, which is connected to the arm, which is connected to the shoulder and etc. Each bone has an offset matrix which transforms a vertex from the local space of the mesh into the local space of the bone. In order to animate the skeleton, we need to access one of the animation structures that are also part of the AI scene class. Each animation structure controls a sequence of animation frames. For example, the Raptoid mascot model has four animations, idling, threatening, retreating, and running. Each animation structure contains an array of node animations, where every one of these AI node anim structures matches one of the bones and defines a set of transformations. You know, the standard scaling, rotation and translation for this bone at various points during the running time of the animation. This basically divides time into a sequence of slots, so to create a smooth animation we need to find a slot for the current point in time, and interpolate between the transformations at the two edges of this slot. We combine these transformations together into a single matrix. The final step is to traverse from the bone back to the root of the hierarchy, while multiplying all the transformation matrices along the way, starting from the offset matrix of the bone. In order to blend animations, we basically need to interpolate between the transformation matrices of the two animations at each individual bone separately. We then repeat the same process of going from the bone to the root. Each bone has a single offset matrix regardless of the number of animations, so we don't need to do any interpolations there. Now interpolating between two matrices directly is not very convenient, but since the matrices were originally constructed from the three basic blocks of scaling, rotation and translation, we can interpolate each pair at this level and then combine the result to a single matrix. Let's take a quick look at the implementation. In terms of the user interface, I've added a public function to the skinned mesh class called getBoneTransformsBlended. It's very similar to the existing getBoneTransforms, except that it takes two animation indices, a start and an end, as well as a blend factor. We convert the time in seconds to animation time in ticks for each animation separately, and extract the two AI animation structures from the scene. As always, most of the work is done in the read node hierarchy function, so we have a new read node hierarchy blended function. The first call to this function starts at the root with the identity matrix. 
Read node hierarchy blended finds the matching AI node anim structure for each animation. In order to make the code cleaner, I created a new structure called local transform that encapsulates the two 3D vectors for scaling and translation, as well as the quaternion for the rotation. For each animation, we calculate the local transformation by interpolating these guys based on the slots that they are in. The code that does the interpolation at the slot level is the same as before, so no need to go over it. Now comes the interesting part. Assuming that both animations have a node animation here, we can perform the interpolation between them. This is where the new local transform structure comes in handy. We extract the two scaling vectors and perform the classic interpolation equation on them. When the blend factor is 0, we get scale 0, and when it is 1, we get scale 1. We can now create a scaling matrix for the result. We do the same thing for translation, but in the case of rotation, we use the interpolate function from the SIMP quaternion class, which performs spherical linear interpolation, aka slurp. If you're using GLM, you can use the function slurp at this point. We combine the three matrices together, and this provides the blended transformation for the current node. Now if you remember, there may be nodes in the graph that don't have any animation. These are kind of metadata nodes that allow the modeling software do stuff like combine objects together or switch between right and left-handed systems. In the original implementation of read node hierarchy, we would override the transformation matrix of the current node when there is an animation on the corresponding bone. In the blended implementation, we do that when both animations have an animated bone at this node. When both of them don't, we simply use the transformation matrix from the node and no interpolation is required. If one of them has an animated bone and the other one doesn't, we have an assertion. This case doesn't exist in the model that I'm using and I didn't want to implement it without being able to test it. Let me know if you ever hit this assertion. The rest of the implementation is as usual. Combine the local transformation with the offset matrix and the global matrix and continue recursively down the graph. That's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.